recognize as we give in our service and in our tithes how God uses it to bless and touch lives. Let me invite us to open our Bibles. One verse in the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. One verse, the twentieth verse. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. A text that speaks abundantly of what God would have us to do. And out of honor and recognition of the reading of the word, I invite us to stand, please. As we stand together, as I read audibly, follow with me in your scripture silently. This one simple but profound verse. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, and we may be seated. I believe one of the greatest deficits we have in America today is that of thankfulness. We live in the wealthiest country on the face of the globe. We have more opportunities than any other human being on the face of the globe. We have all of the technology and all of the goodies and the gadgets, as I would call it, for any human being to be able to utilize and be a blessing to others through that. We have everything right at our fingertips in America today. And yet there is a sense of unthankfulness, a sense of ingratitude. More and more, I believe, people feel today that we deserve something. AOC will tell you that. AOC is talking about, as I mentioned earlier in our study, AOC is talking about the cancellation of student debt. AOC is talking about the cancellation of rent payments. AOC is talking about the cancellation of mortgage payments. AOC and uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and Bernie Sanders talking about free education, free medical care, and everything free. And yet we have a nation today that I believe the greatest deficit is that of thankfulness, a sense of deserving, a sense that somehow, some way, I deserve everything. Rather than a heart of thankfulness, there's a heart of greed and gravious attitudes that says, I want more and more and more. Whatever we have as citizens in America, there seems to be a mindset that that's not enough. We need more and more and more. Today, if God were to give us what we really deserve, each and every one of us would spend eternity in that place called hell. We need to be thankful that we do not get what we deserve, but it's the grace of God, the free gift of God, through our volitional decision to say yes to Christ as Savior and as Lord. Because of God's great love for us, He provides for our needs. He provides for our needs. In fact, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 19 through 33, talks about food, clothing, and shelter. And it says that God already knows our needs, and he'll take care of all of those needs. But there's a requirement. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. There needs to be a recognition that we need to seek God first, foremost, and finally in our lives. How many times lately, you need not say amen or oh me, but how many times lately, have you paused just for a moment to count your blessings and name them one by one? There's an old song that I enjoy. I'm not going to try to sing it for you. My bride could very well. <laughs> it's on page 231 in our hymnal. Count your blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your blessings, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. That's what we rarely do, even as Christians today, is counting our blessings and naming them one by one. That's what we want to talk about in these moments together. Always giving thanks. Always giving thanks. May I remind us, every heartbeat, every breath is a gift from God. Every morning we awaken, it's a gift from God. Every new day is a gift from God. Another opportunity to thank Him and to praise Him for life and living. There are three things that I want us to notice if we're going to be thankful, always giving thanks, three things that I want to call to our attention. First of all, when we should be thankful, recorded. Secondly, when we should be thankful for what we should be thankful for is revealed. And thirdly, whom we should be thankful to, reminded. Notice in that verse, 
the question is, or the answer to that question, when we should be thankful, recorded. Notice it should be continual. The scripture says, make giving uh, thanks always. Now the question begs to be asked and demands to be answered. How long is always? It's on a continual basis. Now I don't recommend that you close your eyes driving down any street in Jacksonville to pray. But we need to be ever conscious of what God has done. And always, that means always, means endlessly, continually, without end. It should not be just on Thanksgiving, but it ought to be every day in our lives that we're thankful, thankful, thankful. In fact, in Psalm 68, 19, the scripture says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with his benefits. It's every day a fresh load of benefits, if you look at that text. We need to recognize that what we need to be thankful for and also to realize that we need to be thankful every day. Colossians 4, 2, the scripture says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Yes, we are to give thanks continually to the Lord without ceasing. In fact, in Colossians three fifteen, the scripture says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. It's commanded. That's in the imperative voice in the Greek text. It means it's a command that we be thankful. So how many of us are usually disobedient to God in our unthankfulness, in our ingratitude, in our failure to say thank you, thank you, thank you on a continual basis? Not only our thanksgiving should be continual, but it should be a choice, a choice. We should choose to be thankful. Leviticus twenty two twenty nine. And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will, at your own volition. We need to make a decision that we're going to be thankful. It's not something that automatically happens. We need to be consciously, deliberately thinking about every way and every manner in all things that we thank the Lord for what he has provided for us. The scripture in this text says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the, in the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is always giving thanks. It is continually, but it is a volitional choice. We make a choice to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you're providing for me. In fact, in Psalm 69 and verse 30, the scripture says this, Notice in 69.30, says, I will. It's a volitional choice. It's a will. I will praise the name of God with song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. It's a decision that ought to be made. It's a decision that I contend ought to be made each and every day because it is very easy to go through a day with the what I would call the hustle and bustle or the uh, whirl and the uh, push in life and living each and every day. For all of us, it doesn't make any difference what strata we are in life and what we're doing in ministry or service or work or profession. It is so easy for time to simply collapse in on us, as the little boy said on one occasion, and time is gone. But in that time, we need to make a volitional choice that we're going to continually thank the Lord for his blessings in our lives. That is a choice that we need to make. Don't do it out of force and don't do it out of habit, but do it because uh, we love the Lord. Not because you're told to, not because we're told to, but because we volitionally choose to say thank you, thank you, thank you, always, always, always. Multitudes of people run around unhappy, unthankful, miserable, and in that unhappiness, in that uh, unthankfulness, in that misery, they cause others to be miserable around them. You ever seen a person that is always miserable, always unhappy, always griping and belly aching, if I can use that term, and complaining, and that seems to rub off on others around them, and before you know it, you're thinking neg negatively, you are in the, as the old cliche calls it, down in the dumps, you're discouraged yourself, you're unhappy as a result of what is being said around you with that person that's unthankful, not grateful at all for what God is doing in our lives. Believers should be the most thankful people on the face of the globe. Believers should be thankful for what God has done for us. We need to be thankful for the privilege and the opportunity to have life and living and service and surrender under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Not only when we should be thankful recorded, but I want us to notice what we should be thankful for 
revealed in this text. Notice the scripture says in this verse, giving thanks always for some things. Didn't say that, did he? <laughs> giving thanks always for all things. All things. That is a comprehensive statement. All things. How many things? Each and everything. All things. We should be thankful and it should be comprehensive for all things. What are some of those things that we need to be thankful for? I know this sounds super simplistic, but I've just outlined several of those things that I believe that is encompassing, uh, encompassed in this statement of all things. For our faith, for our family, for our friends, our funds, that's little or much, whatever it may be, for the food that we're provided with, for our flag, for the fortune to live in America today. We should be thankful for that. But as I pondered this text and just the simplistic outline that I have developed from it, I pondered it and thought, I am thankful that I grew up in a home with a Christian mother with a mother that saw to it that we had Bible reading and prayer time in our home. I'm thankful for that fundamental, rudimentary, elemental foundation in the Word of God back in those young, formative days. I am thankful for the Bible. In fact, uh, my bride will tell you, I've got several thousand, several thousand, thousand notes and outlines that my Bible is so covered with uh, pen and ink and yellow marking that sometimes I can't read what's the, on the page. But I look at it and I tell her sometimes as I'm th sitting at my desk studying, I am thankful for my Bible. I'm thankful for what God has allowed me to record and to have all at hand to pick up where I've done the study, where I've done the outlines, where I've done the preparation, where I've looked at it in depth and have that to go from in further studies and development. I am thankful for my health today. I'm thankful that every morning I wake up and say, thank you, Lord, that I'm alive. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for giving me the health and the opportunity to serve you. I think back uh, about uh, eight years ago now, yeah, eight years, and the first time that I was uh, to take my chemo pill, I was thinking to myself, and I told my bride, I said, I don't know what this is going to do to me. I don't know how it's going to make me feel. I don't know whether I'll survive it or not, uh, but uh, I was directed to take it. I have every day. I'm thankful every day for life and health and strength as a result of the medical uh, opportunity through the uh, therapy that's been provided through that I am thankful for it. Most of us, most of the time, do not recognize what we have with life and health and every heartbeat and every breath that is a gift from God, and we fail to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for providing that for me. I am thankful for the hope that we have, that blessed hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. We as believers ought to be thankful that the next thing on the calendar of God is the rapture of the church. We ought to be thankful that we are in this world, but not of this world. We need to be thankful that through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're saved, 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 and on our way to glory as a result of our salvation. We need to be thankful for our health and for our heartbeat, every heartbeat. We need to be thankful for the happiness and the privilege that God gives us. We need to be thankful for our homes and for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says, in all things. How many times do we fail to meet this requirement biblically, to thank him for all things? That's good things, bad things, those that are infinitesimally small things, those that are great things, those things that we don't understand, those things that we can't recognize as being a blessing from the Lord at the time they take place. Are we thankful for that? Are we simply as some thankful for those big things, those great things, those grand things, those things that are very quickly identifiable as being from God? Are we thankful for those small, small things? things. My bride can tell you and affirm the fact that as I am privileged occasionally to get a new shirt or new shoes or new clothes, I am thankful for it. I grew up with nothing. I grew up with shoes with holes in the bottom and my mother would cut cardboard insoles to put inside so my feet would not be on the wet ground. I grew up in the day that my white shirt were made out of leftover bed sheets that were no longer good for the bed because of being worn out in places and the white shirts that I wear for Sunday school and for church and for worship service were made by her own hands. I'm thankful for a good set of clothing. I'm thankful that God has seen fit to provide that for me. And every day in each of our lives, 
we fail to look at all of the bountiful blessings that God has given to us, as the Psalms text tells us in that text that I read a moment ago, for that we're loaded fresh every day with a bountiful blessing from the Lord. God provides that, and it's only through God's hand of his love and his mercy and his grace. And yet we fail to be thankful. We're unthankful so often for those blessings that God places in our lives. We should be thankful, and it should be comprehensive. And secondly, our thanksgiving, not just comprehensive, but it should be communicated. It should be communicated. Psalms 26, 7 says, That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wonderful works. Do we tell others about what we're thankful for? Do we share with others our thanksgiving? Maybe at, Chris, at Easter, at uh, Thanksgiving time, we're willing to do that. We're willing to say, thank you, Lord, and I'm thankful for you, thankful for life, etc. But every day, is it comprehensive that we say, thank you, thank you, thank you for what God has given us? Do we publish it? Do we communicate it? Do we share it with others? in saying, thank you, Lord. It is a blessing to others to hear from the tongue of mortal man a thanksgiving to God for what God has done for us, what he has given us, and what he has provided for us in health and strength and opportunity to serve him. And for a country that we live in today that's a free nation, at least for now, It is a free nation where we have our Bill of Rights, where we have the privilege of uh, speaking and worshiping freely, where we have the freedoms that we uh, enjoy today, but that may be on the horizon of being lost. Are we saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the freedom in our land? for the privilege to study your word, for the privilege of reading your word, for the opportunity to have worship services that could very easily be taken from us. There are nations around the globe that would be eternally grateful just to have one day, one week, one month in America as we know it today. Are we truly thankful for what God has provided for us in those blessings? Again in Psalm 69 and verse 30, I will praise the name of of God with song and will magnify his name. When we thank him, when we communicate our thankfulness, it's magnifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's lifting him up. It is saying, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for meeting my need. Thank you for food, clothing, and shelter today. Thank you for health and opportunity to serve you today. That's what Thanksgiving should be about. That's what we ought to be thankful for. When should we be thankful? Recorded. What we should be thankful for is revealed. But notice in Ephesians 5.20 also, whom we should be thankful to is reminded. Is reminded. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we say, thank you, Lord. It's a thanksgiving to our Creator. It's saying thank you unto God and Father. It is the God of the universe. It is the creator, controller of this world that we're saying thank you, Lord. It's not thank you, boss. It's not thank you, company. It's not thank you, friend, neighbor, relative. It's thank you, God. Whatever hand it comes through, it is still from God himself. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is a gift from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no veritableness, neither shadow of turning. Every gift that we have, the gift of life, the opportunity to live, the opportunity to serve, and what God provides on our plate each day, what God provides on our feet each day, what God provides on our back each day, what God provides in the home that we live in every day, we need to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and the realization that it comes from God, and our thanksgiving is to God the Father through God the Son via the Holy Spirit of God as he makes intercession for us. That's a tall order, but that's required biblically, especially if we say we're saved. We need to be thankful. It is thanksgiving to our Creator, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Often we're prone to say thank you for the company that I work for and what they have given me. Thank you for the paycheck that I receive from the boss that signs it. Thank you for all things in that realm. But we ought to go beyond that and realize that it comes through God. He provides every good And perfect, that word perfect there means mature, complete gift. And it's from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no veritableness, neither shout of turning. We should thank him 
because he's our creator. We should thank him because he is the controller. We should thank him because he is the provider. We should thank him because he is our heavenly father. And he's the one that makes it possible in our lives each and every day. How many times are we truly thankful? How many times do we feign thanksgiving and we're not truly thankful? I believe that some of the most thankful people in Christendom today are those that have come out of a debauched lifestyle, those that have come out of the uh, depths and the breadth of sin, and God the Father through Jesus Christ saved them, and they look back and see what their lives were like, and they're saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for using me in service and surrender under your lordship. That ought to be the thankfulness of our hearts today. That ought to be the mantra on our minds today. That ought to be what we say each and every day to everybody as we see them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I had a call this afternoon from that one that some of you have met from graduation services about two years ago. Pastor Albert Stroop, 92 years old, still preaching each Sunday, and he called to check on me to see how I'm doing. <laughs> Had a wonderful 10, 15 minutes with him on the telephone. A wonderful communication opportunity. But I recall in his talking this evening, and he said so many times, how thankful he is for what God has allowed us to do in serving him. You see, he was my mentor, my pastor. And I'm thankful for him. And he has not realized as full and complete as I can communicate each time we talk how thankful I am for him, for his life and for his ministry and for what I've seen in his life of faithfulness. And always thank him for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we see others that are faithful and committed to the word, committed to the Lord, committed to the ministry, and committed to service, committed to their families and their life through the word of God, we need to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the evident faithfulness in your life. Thank you for serving the Lord. Thank you for surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you ought to be on the heart and the mind and the tongue of every mortal human being today that we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We should make Thanksgiving Day a daily habit. Our hearts should be lifted up before the throne of God, praising Him and thanking Him for uh, allowing us to love Him and serve Him and honor Him. And we do so, the Scripture says, in the name of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how we ought to thank him. That's what we ought to thank him for. That's how we should respond because of what he's done for us. Not for those great things, grand things, but the scripture says for everything that is every little thing and every big thing. Are we truly thankful for that? Are we thankful when we have the privilege to get an automobile and turn the key and drive down the highway? When our fathers and our grandfathers and grandmothers and the era gone by did not have that privilege. They could not go to a telephone and pick up the phone and simply call someone. We have all of the modern uh, things today that should cause us to recognize that God's hand is at work in America. And we ought to say thank you, thank you, thank you Lord for America and us uh, having the privilege of living here and serving you here. I think that Americans are probably the most unthankful, ungrateful group of people on the face of God's green earth today. We rarely say thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for making us whole. Thank you for taking care of our health and our lives. Thank you for your word. As I studied the scripture in preparation for Sunday, I will sit sometimes and just get caught up in the grandeur and the greatness of the words on the printed page. And will tell my bride, this is a fantastic message. I just wish we had a good preacher to preach it. <laughs> I am thankful for the word of God and for the privilege to study his word and proclaim his word. I want us to think for a moment as we close. There are four kinds of people in the world today. Four kinds of people in the world today. Just four kinds. Number one, the constant complainer. The constant complainer. Always griping, always grumbling, always complaining. Nothing ever seems to be right. Nothing ever seems to bring them joy. Nothing ever seems to give them contentment. Nothing ever seems to bring them happiness. But always griping and bemoaning their plight in life. Even as Christians, that often takes place. Number two, the people who live in ingratitude. 
the people who live in, in gratitude. Never thankful. They don't complain. Listen, they don't complain. They're just not thankful. They never say thank you. They never say thank you to God for the blessings. They never say thank you to a waitress for helping. They never say thank you to mom or dad for drink, bringing them up properly. They never say thank you for someone opening the door. They never say thank you for someone helping them. They never say thank you for a helping hand and someone lifting them out of the miry clay. They never say thank you. People who live in ingratitude. The third kind of people that we find in the world today, the people who thank God for only his blessings, the people who thank God only for his blessings, those that are willing to say, thank you, Lord, for the new car. Thank you for the new home. Thank you for the clothing. Thank you for the job. Thank you for the increase in pay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just thanking God for those things that are so great and grand that they're seen as being the absolute next best thing to slice bread, as I call it. And they simply say, thank you, for those grand and great blessings. Not for everything, always thankful, but just for those particular blessings. Then there's the fourth category of people today. There are those who are thankful for all things. Thankful for all things. Thankful for health and for life and for strength and for opportunity to serve. Thank you for the word of God, the written, revealed, inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God that we can know God better through knowing his word. The progressive revelation of God to man through from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation 22. We ought to be thankful for that. And there are those today that are thankful for all things, as this scripture says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which category do you fall in? Have you pondered that? Which kind of person are you? How do you stand? Which one are you? Do you thank God for everything, every little thing, every big thing, every good thing, every bad thing? I'm not talking about now when you hit your finger with the thumb with the, uh, with the hammer and you say, thank you, Lord. That's not what it's talking about at all. <laughs> but everything that's good Everything that it seems to be bad, every little thing and every big thing, we ought to be thankful for. Because the scripture says, always in all things. That means all. There's not a qualification there in that word all. All means all. Oh, we're thankful people. This Thanksgiving season, I pray that we'll recognize the need to simply everything, every day, say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to serve you. Thank you for health and strength to do so. Thank you for loved ones and family members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you stand please?